Uh, hello everybody, it's MP, ready to do the final two episodes of the Talons of Wing Chiang. So when I count down 3, 2, 1, we'll do part 5. On your DVD, select episode 5. In 3, 2, 1, play. And there are the Tom Baker graphics for episode 5. He's off on one again. Back through time and space in his toes. I like these, Sid Sun. Sid Sun did the graphics, obviously, for this one. And uh, Tom in his classic Season 12 outfit there. And the diamond logo. The Season 12 outfit I like because they just elongated the um, jacket in the end, didn't they? But anyway, what was it? The, um, <coughs> see Robert Holmes, the king. So here we are. We're back into the uh, Hackney carriage. Oh, yeah, they nicked the wardrobe, didn't they? They nicked the time cabinet. And Chiang and Mr. Sin having a laugh. There are many sins here. But this is all good. Let's see period drama made by the BBC in the 70s. Looks good. It's all groovy. And someone's dead, been left on the floor. <laughs> With his pickaxe. Lightfoot's got visitors, so they're going to go in and have a look. See the way the grain changes now. See, why don't they film everything on film? Because you go inside and you get this horrible, I think it's 70 frames a second, video recording, like an old video camera recording. It looks rubbish. It just looks like you're filming in your front room, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, life has been bashed on the head. And I think they've talked up his head to make him look older, obviously. <laughs> um, yes, he's holding his head. He's got his nice toweling jacket on there, hasn't he? And you're looking for the damn scoundrels to get him a drink. See, he hasn't met with Jago yet, and they've... And they go on about him being a double act. Well, this is the fifth episode, and I think they meet in this episode, so they have about two episodes to create that whole thing, that whole foundation. So that's Robert Holmes for you. He creates that whole foundation in two episodes. People want his spin offs, which I think Big Finish done. Don't really do a lot of Big Finish because that's not really my bag. But um, Tong Wallers, <laughs> criminals, oh, that's what it is, right? Okay. The gutter scrapings of Shanghai and one midget. Well, see, that's a little bit racist again. But I suppose a criminal is a criminal anywhere you go. <laughs> and of course, Mr. Sin got in the laundry basket because he's very small. <laughs> Which means he could um, get in and out of the place, let everyone in, let the assassins in. Let Tom to the hairdressers for a nice perm. The year 5000 he comes from. Here we go again, the exposition now. See, a plaything for the commissioner's children. Uh, contain magnetic fields, that's something, something out of um, Evil of the Daleks. So I think Robert Holmes watched a bit of Doctor Who, didn't he? And the cerebral cortex of a pig. Lovely. It calls World War Six because the thing, the little thing went mad, but he still brought it back in time with him, so. Why would he bring it back in time with him if it's crazy? Which never makes sense to me anyway. Because he wouldn't bring back this mad, peaking, homunculus thing if he was crazy and caused the war. But I assume that Magnus Greel's gone just as mad by going through time and splicing his body into other people. Why don't he just take the energy of the peaking homunculus, eh? The Mr. Sin. <laughs> I suppose we'll never know the answer to that one, eh? Anyway, needs, a, uh, needs an operator. The swinish instinct has to become dominant. Yeah, I think. It revels in car. So there he is looking at Mang. So he's crazy. But Magnus Greel doesn't realise this, Chang, Wang Chang. So that's just another weird. And here we are. We found the black the cabinet again. And I think this is rehearsal room one at Acton. They've just bung the... I uh, know oh, the dragon's quite good though, isn't it? I mean, for BBC of 1977, with little budget, this is quite good. This might be Roger Murray Leach, I don't know, I didn't look at the credits, it doesn't really matter. But it's well designed, isn't it? They've got the cabinets, and now they can do it. They've got the time cabinet, and they can do whatever they wish. <laughs> I promise you, Mr Sin, we shall not remain long among these filthy barbarians. See, the irony in that statement, they're filthy barbarians. And they've lost the bag. They haven't got the soap on a rope. They can't send it. See, he's a proper Asian guy. Why couldn't they have got everyone? You cowering oaf. See, this is definitely Robert Holmes' dialogue, isn't it? He loves these. He's gone mental. 
That sent Mr. Sin even more crazy. But yeah, late nights when I was younger, I used to put this on my VHS player, which probably none of you know what it is, but that was the thing of the times. Uh, oh, he was going to kill them all. He hasn't, has he got a weapon? No, oh, no. They're going to get their scorpion venom out again. So why is he going to kill everybody? And why would you die if you know he's going to bugger off? Doesn't make any sense, does it? I wouldn't have took it. Did they have little smarties in them days? Don't they? Oh my god, what an idiot. It's worth dying for that ugly weird... Oh, toothache. Immediate toothache. And death. Mr. Sin and Wang Chang are laughing maniacally. I think Mr. Sin's eyebrows stuck shut. Put too much makeup on him that day, did they? Oh, there they go. They're going to be off now. I'm going to try and... Uh, I think they've got to find Jago at some point. I don't know what Jago's been doing. He's probably been burying Casey. He was on the Casey, wasn't he? He had to bury Bernard Casey. No, I think he's a, he would have had an Irish name like... I don't know. What is an Irish? Shane? Shane Casey. Sounds good. Doesn't it? He's got his deer stalker on because he's really sure looking up today, is Tom. Tom Doc. And now... Oh yeah, this, uh, this, is, uh, this is how the time things... See, this is really good, I like this. This is all HG Wells, isn't it? See, the time, sh the elastic of where they sent the time cabinet is so stretch. It takes so much power to get it in. And now he's talking about Leland being a lady not going in, but that's ridiculous. Of course, she's a solder. <laughs> she's well hard. <laughs> anyway, the string is so taut that when they use it again, it will snap and kill everything. And make a, an explosion and destroy the world. Oh, Jay goes down in the uh, down in the cellar again. So this looks really good, doesn't it? I mean, if you're all sitting alone listening to this with me because you like a bit of added to your commentaries, not commentaries, you know, to your viewing because you don't want to view alone because it's so lonely up there. But here we go. See, he's just sitting there watching it. He's enjoying it. His theatre. He's got his uh, wallpaper waistcoat there that I think Colin Baker wore later on. He's going to clear out the old junk and why is he doing it himself though? See, no staff. Oh, and he's got the Mary Poppins bag. There it is. What in the name of heavens is that? <laughs> it's very good. I like this story. It's probably one of my favourite Toms. It's got to be top ten Tom. And that out of like 40 odd stories is very good. Because Tom did um, seven years in the role, obviously. And he was the doctor for seven years and over 40 stories. We don't need to count episodes because that's pointless. But 40 stories, so he did more than anyone else by a considerable length. So for a lot of people in the 70s, he was the main doctor. He was the king of the doctors. Which is great because he really is the king of the doctors. And he's the other one they brought back in the 50th anniversary with Matt Smith and David Tennant. And John Hurt, who doesn't really count because he's the war doctor, but still an incarnation, still use a regen. But anyway, light foot. See, no, can't pay. This must have got the budget, must get really tight in this story. Because you notice there are really no extras except for the five Asian, well, one Asian guy and whoever else was there. Uh, and he thinks Lightfoot's the bloody butler. <laughs> Confound your insolence, announce me. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> I'm Lightfoot. Oh, this is cool. I love it. See, it's a great meeting, isn't it? See, Robert Holmes, why was he never given a series? Uh, maybe he didn't want to, but he would have been fantastic. In the words of the ninth doc, he would have been fantastic, wouldn't he? And he could have made this series. It's just a shame Robert Holmes died in 86 after the middling, horrifying trial of a Time Lord episode. Or 12 episodes of boredom. Just to compare Trial of a Time Lord to the Dalek's Master Plan, and it leaves it for dead. I mean, Dalek Master Plan's got a couple of padded Christmas episodes, but bloody hell. It's a million times better than the boring Trial of a Boring Time Lord. Or Psycho Time Lord, as in Colin Bay. I'd have found him guilty and blasted him anyway. And regressed him back to Tom or Peter Davison, got rid of the Colin Baker doctor. Something ain't wrong here, Time Lords. Let's get rid of this crazy buffoon and go back. So I think that's what happened with... JNT, when Colin Baker took over, he just went bananas with power and thought he could do no wrong and made the Doctor in his own image. But we'll get to that. Anyway, here we are in Classic Who, real Classic Who. There are stages of Classic Who. And the 70s is Classic Stage 1, I would say, wouldn't you? All of the 70s, barring a few duds, is probably the 
super classic era one of Who. The 60s is classic era two because William Arnold's really boring, although he's got some good stories, but then doesn't play today, I don't think. And Patrick Trout is a prototype modern doctor, so we'll give that classic era two. And of course, the 80s has to be classic era three, which is a shame because I don't like McCoy and I don't like Colin Baker, but Peter Davison was brilliant. And there you have my opinions on that. Feel free to disagree, I don't care. Anyway, here we go. It's some queer lot of paraphernalia, so let's get all this stuff that Wang Chiang's left here. The murderous lunatic. The bag was amongst her old junk, so he found it all in the, the cellar. Will someone return for it? That is the question, says Ophello. Or whoever, who cares? Take hands where the doctor isn't here, so they're going to go and do it now. They're going to infiltrate Magnus Greel. Might get a chance to nab this fella. <laughs> Are you suggesting a pernictation? See, I don't, nocturnal vapours. It's brilliant dialogue, but I'm not sure the youth of today can get there. I mean, I might be doing a disservice. They might be really good, but I can't imagine the youth of today grasping all this dialogue, really. He's going to find him a cape to use. No, he's going to sort of say he's a coward, because he is indeed a coward. Oh, there's a letter coming under the foot, the doorstep, the door frame, whatever it is. Um, I think he's challenging uh, Chiang to a duel with his rope on a soap. <laughs> soap on a rope. Oh, there we go. Oh, very clever. See, that's how you break into somewhere who leaves their old-fashioned key about. Bit daft, but there you go. That's just the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. Uh-huh. Oh, and there's the crappy bunk beds. But they are in. Tom has found a way in. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Right, so in they go. I think he's going to find um, Chen, isn't he? Chang? He's going to find Chang. Wing Chang will show his hand again. Oh, here's all the girls that have been vaporised or held. Oh dear. He's got to try and build his body levels before he used the Zigma beam, the failed experiment that he'll kill again tonight. See, this is all sort of Jack the Ripper stuff. Oh, they're talking to Chang at the House of the Dragon. Old Chang's going to tell him where that is now. So this is the classic from the 70s. And Leela all covered up where she shouldn't be because she was a good uh, she was a good companion. I didn't like her. I thought he had a recorder in his hand at this point. He's opiumed up, but he still survived. He's on the pipe of Poppy, but he's dying, bleeding out after being attacked by the rat. He recognised he regained consciousness in a charnel house. Ugh. Putrefying ship. Oh, he woke up where they kept all the dead bodies. Very nice. Not. But you've got to admire the 70s workmanship of this stuff. It is good, isn't it? And I know it took me a while to get this story out, but to be honest, it's, it's a hard story to talk over. Because I'm trying to be amusing, but I fear I failed badly this time with the viewership going down by the second. So I think we'll go back to some shorter stuff after this. Because I'm not sure people are interested in my Who commentaries. But leave a comment if you want me to do any more. But um, I think that the, the audience market is so saturated with Doctor Who comments that I don't think many people are interested in it. And, uh, of course, the six-episode story is a long chat. So I've had to break this up. So you'll hear me being down, up, down, up, down, talking about breaking it down to one episode, two episodes. But I think we'll finally finish it off to today, get the chunks out, the final few chunks. Because I owe it to the to those one people or two people that do listen to my commentaries to finish this off. So they got to go out to where the tongs are. And Chen's going to die, but we need him for some exposition and to pay John Bennett another episode fee. And I think he's going to drop dead very soon. It's not going to be. He's going to join his ancestors. <laughs> he can see them. Because uh, Greel um, picked him up in the paddy fields a thousand years ago, apparently. And um, they use the elastic band Sigma beam time travel, which distorts human metabolism. Because Greel must be a human being at the end of the day. Because he has now um, been um, 
altered, hasn't he? He's been altered. That's why he has to suck, but every time he sucks the life force out of a woman, he uh, becomes even more metabolically unstable and die. And you know, he can't die, I don't think. Or maybe he can because he's become so weak, he's turned into sort of paper mache. Like, you know, bits and pieces, but there it is. Um, but, yes, he is a very good um, actor, John Bennett. And I don't think we should detract from the fact that he's taken an Asian's role. From the fact that he can still do the part very well. And I like his acting. And here we are, back at Dragon Central. Now, the, when I watch this as a mixed-up thing, no, oh, they're still alive. Oh, no, the main one's guy, the second guy's still alive. You see, if they know he's going to go in his Robots of Death cabinet, because that looks like the back ends of the Robots of Death there, doesn't it? Like they've used one of those cabinets from the Robots of Death and just built a cabinet around it where he de-energises people. Now he's looking at an invisible map. <laughs> a room divider. <laughs> Yes, he's going to kill everybody, Stone, but destroy the city. See, if you were listening to this, all these servants, why the blooming... Oh, we, why would you... Oh, they're outside. There's Jack the Ripper and his mate. Holmes and Watson. No, Watson and... What did they say? Lestrange. Is it Lestrange? Whatever his name is. The um, Sherlock Holmes' bloke, who, policeman who always... Because they always make poli policemen look like idiots in the Holmes books. Sir Arthur Condom Doyle, who invented condoms, I hope you know that. Um, yeah, but um, see, we get the sort of all this fans wank, all this fan wank for these two is from these two episodes when they have these interactions. So it just goes to show you how powerful uh, Robert Holmes was with his worm, words, didn't it, really? He was the man. I mean, he really was. Oh, we've got heat. Oh, here they are being arrested. Um, see, they're ineffective, these two guys, but there it is. They can't help it. But being a Time Lord, I suppose, Tom's seen all this. He's probably the Butcher of Brisbane, so he's probably been to the future. And they call it Brisbane because, um, obviously... They can't pronounce stuff back in the day. <laughs> oh, the police won't do nothing, mate. You've had it. Oh, I was going to kill Jago. <laughs> Let me finish this simpleton old voyeur. Oh, he's giving old life a good old slap there, but that was behind the camera, so we obviously didn't see the slap. They're manhandling these two lovely old boys. Isn't it bad, eh? Oh, he's going to get strangled now. Because oh. he wants his soap on a rope. He's determined to destroy London and get back to... I don't know where he's going to go exactly. I don't know what time frame he's aiming for. 5,000 years in the future is a long time into the future, isn't it? But we'll see. Apparently, though, why doesn't Tom just give it to him and let him go, though? I know. Oh, no, because he'd destroy London, only that's right. Yeah, so he can't. Oh, for pity's sake, stop strangling him. You'll die later. It will give the pleasure to my wolves. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Filthy bounder. <laughs> oh, they're going in with the other prisoners. They, they look more Asian. I think they might have been a bit more PC towards the end of this story. Obviously realising that um, things are not too good. Oh, Tom's letter. At least Tom left him a letter. That's it being in old High Gallifreyan. No, well, we'll probably, we may get around to the deadly assassin. I don't know. My The people's love for my commentaries is small. So we might have to move back to my classic comedy collection. <laughs> we will in time. We'll come round to Tom. It's just because I'm lazy. I can't get these things out fast enough. There they are. He's got the soap on a rope. The plastic thing. It does, doesn't it? Like a soap on a rope. I bought my dad one of them 10 years, 15, 20 years ago. Tronic lattice. And then, so why would... Um, well, how did he lose all this stuff? Did he crash and fall a start part and lost his cabinet and his bloody rope on a dope on a rope? It's just madness, isn't it? You Greek or his Greek for the bath is too hot, so <laughs> uh, see that's the only thing that makes it work. And you can see how this could have been the master. Don't you really? I mean this could have been the master, couldn't it? And why they didn't use... Well, they'd only just use the master 
a story before this well, early, well, a couple ago, so it would have been a fit in return, I suppose. But still, they can't do that because I'll give them credit, they didn't want to be the same boring, like, um, you know, what you would expect, like John, John Nathan Turner would definitely have bought the master back, there'd be no doubt about it, really, because uh, he was as predictable as a piece of paper. But why he didn't, um, you know. Is another state of thing, isn't it, really? Because I would have. Definitely, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have bought the master back like they didn't. So there I am contradicting myself like a loony. But still. Oh. Yep, yeah, drugged. All these people are drugged down the cellar. Which is probably good because... Um, they wouldn't want the fate that they have away in store for them come if uh, Grill gets hold of them, eh? Because <laughs> he, well, he, although he wants to vaporise the ladies, we're not too sure, are we, what he wants to do for the others. So he's now going to explain how scared he is. <laughs> how scared he is, sorry. He's very scared of what they might do. You're forgetting the doctor. See, the doctor's... See... Lightfoot's got a lot of faith in the Doctor, whereas um, Jago thinks no. And uh, it's nice to see the touching faith. You know, he's on our tracks this very minute. It's a dumb way uh, they can pull themselves up. <laughs> oh, I love it. These two are a good double act. They could have made a series of this, but I'm not sure the BBC would have had the um, budget for these days. What do you reckon? We're not sure. Oh, here we go. They're pulling it out. All the gears coming out. After you, he won't go first. See, they recycle these lines a lot, don't they? The five doctors, I think. Um, Trouton always let the person go first, but Pertwee, the action man, let Sarah Jane go first, which was really bad, wasn't it? You, my five doctors commentary is on here somewhere. If you want to hear another Doctor Who commentary, I dare you. Leave a love and a like, and a, you think I'm fantastic. At my Doctor Who commentaries, which I'm not really, I know, because I'm struggling on my own. I had my son here the other day. We could have gone through these brilliantly because we were taking the absolute Michael. I didn't put my recorder on like a fool. It was worth it. We did Destiny of the Daleks and Tomb of the Sidemen. No, Tomb of the Sidemen is an absolute classic along with this. So, mm. But anyway, they've broken into the dragon round the back. Looks like they're still using that theatre, doesn't it, really? Just redressed it, but I'm assuming this is BBC Centre. And just think the old dragon would have been broken down. After. It's probably made out of whatever, polished iron or something. Polished iron in a chainsaw, we're guessing. No tellings. It certainly isn't the dining room and it's not the way out. Oh, they've been caught straight away. Really good. Why has he got a spanner? He's got his wrench. He's got Cocky Licking's wrench from the rescue. Yeah, you remember? Oh, my God. We might trap him in the crossfire, Doctor. What are going to do? What are they going to do? Burn the thing down? we got all that gear, but, I mean, what? <laughs> We've got to reinforce the borders for the approaches. Because, yeah, Grill's coming for his soap on a rope. He wants it. He'll be there soon enough. So the fourth incarnation... Oh, cricket bat. Oh, look, she wants to be the fifth doctor. The fifth doctor would have given him six straight away. Wallop. And a nice golf club, which would have been very useful. I don't know about the aim of it. Uh, I'm just going to use it as a javelin with a heavy back. Oh, he nearly got the oh, He's going to get a safer of infirm. He's got perfect. See, he's already... Why didn't he send his men in to take him out? Why has he come himself? Oh, here we go. The reveal. The case of Androzani. Oh, here it is. Oh, scary, scary. And that's the end of the episode, peeps. Oh, we'll be moving on to episode... Sixth and the climax very soon. Don't worry, we'll be back on it in a very soon minute. Right, let's get episode six up. Uh, get back, get back, get back. Um, let's get to our title menu. And our 
episode thing and we're queuing up episode six so if you're ready in three two one part six play and there we go back to the time tunnel for the denouement the drama's building big time now for a six bar and Rob, Robert Holmes said he hated six bars but I think this one even though yeah there's some padding in the middle where I did struggle to speak I'll admit which is why I broke this one up um, Doctor Who Diamond Logo going off into the distance there um, and this is The Talents of Wing Chiang episode 6 well by Robert Holmes part 6 and this is it so there, we're going to have a big long recount because obviously these things always ran short um, because um, you could never fill in the episodes with enough stuff because um, there was always a problem with the um, well, padding, really, I suppose. You'd have to call it padding because that's all it is, really, isn't it? Which is a shame because it's such a good story. I think if you, like, so, like I said a million times, if you edit these down, you'd probably get a really cohesive hour and a half, but Leela's just about to get um, chloroformed and date-raped, I think. So here we go. Yep, there she goes. But now we're going to get... The ugly man that we're going to get what's happened to Grill with his metabolic meltdown. And here it is, the metabolic meltdown. He is an oh, and he's got... A, obviously, the child, the Asian actor doesn't care where he comes with his book. Sitting there waiting for him, mate. Look. Ah, oh, there he is. Brilliant, Tom. Take no notice, doesn't care. He gives that veneer of not caring at all. And now he's going to give him big goad on. And, of course, they're all going back. See, he broke the rule. Oh, he's got his axe. He looks poised in the background there, doesn't he? The judo chop, which is, obviously, Austin Powers' references there. Oh, Doctor, you are an unusual man. <laughs> You're far out of your depth. I think Tom's going to lose it in a minute because um, he does the anger, really. I think Tom does the anger best than most of the Doctors, really. I mean, you've got McCoy who couldn't act his way out of a black brown paper bag with his shit crappy acting. Um, Colin Baker is just over blood. He always, I think he brought that out on um, Scarrow, didn't he? On Genesis of the Day. He's got the, is that the Batmobile there? He's got the Batmobile. Oh no, copyright infringement. Yeah. Why he's got that? I just think that must have gone to the prop van and said, well, grab. I bet that's worth a few quid. Oh, it's the Jelly Babies. Originated by Patrick Trout, not Tom. So none of that racism, please. Heavens to bets to see they're playing with him. But Mr. Sin will kill the girl. And you know he will, so here it is, he's got it out. Boom. Stop. The Tronic Lattice. And it will shatter because... I don't know what they made it. I mean, it looks like a piece of soap gone crystal, obviously, didn't it? But, there you go. Now Tom's threatening, so he's got you arrogant jackanapes. When I'm crowded, I get nervous. He might say, spack off, like he does in Destiny of the Daleks, which we recently looked at. Well, I looked at. <laughs> Here we go. But don't give it to him, Tom, until you've got... I'd never trust a man with dirty fingernails. I'll make a bargain with you. He's going to give it to him, see? Uh, they're going to get to the House of the Dragon where they want to get... He wants to free, yeah, two other his friends, Jago and Lightfoot. Although Tom was all right with these, this old, you know, with Grill... Sucking the life force out of those blundering dolts. I doubt you could understand. Well, yeah, because they're so sweet. They deserve... So He's got like a Darth Vader mask on, not he? Is this pre-Vader? It's not too far away, is it? It does look similarly Vader-ish, doesn't it? Must be said. But you never know, do you? You never know. He's got... I mean, he's even got... Maybe George Lucas was staying in London. He thought, oh, that would be a cool device, wouldn't it? We'll have that. He looks more sort of Kylo Ren, but that's a long way into the future, isn't it? So, <laughs> Anywho, well, they're, they're off and at it. So um, they're all going to leave together in a lovely... Are they all going to fit in a hackney carriage? Do you think? Do you think he's thought about those logistics that they've all got to fit in one hackney carriage, this lot? <laughs> Highly unalagally, isn't it? Oh, Leela's ready. She's got her sword out. She's going to do some kicking ass in a minute. 
Leela was obviously next to Ace, the toughest of the companions, I think. Oh no, well, Ace was just really badly acted, and I don't care what you say, she couldn't act a toffee, that one. I don't know why everyone loves her so much. It's the, it's the worst kind of play school acting I've ever heard in my life. Anyway, we might do an Ace and the Seventh Doctor, because that's where Doctor Who really meets the bargain bucket, doesn't it? It becomes the crappiest programme of all time at that time. And no wonder they axed it, because even though the stories were better, I would have axed it as well. That much is definitely certain. Oh, look, now he's going to say he's, he's not a brave man, which I like, because who is really brave when put to the thing, you know? You know, in the end, who really is brave when it comes to it? And that's what he says, and he's absolutely right, who is, you know, because we're not. We would be scared, we wouldn't be able to do it. And it's just down to the down to the why. It's either you are or you aren't, isn't it? See, that's my trouble. Like, for, I'm not awfully brave when it comes to it, but I, I try, but I'm not. So there you go. He tries, but he's not brave. Nobody is. There you go. See, this is Robert Holmes writing as well. So say that he's the youngest pilot in World War Two as well, which he was. You can imagine this coming out of what he's heard probably through his life. And you, if you. Do it, you're going to stand back. And here they all are. We're back at... And I think he's got the dumb in his hand, as old John Bennett. There's a weird episode of Jonathan Creek later on in his career where he sort of died and floated up the stairs in a flood. That was quite a good story. Worth a watch, men and ladies out there. The Three Gamblers, I think it's called. Look at Tom posing it up a big one. He's got a John Pertwee stance going on there. He's even sort of got a John Pertwee sort of velvet jacket on there, isn't he? So he's Pertweeing himself up a bit here, isn't he? Hmm. Going back to his... Because they do have similarities, I think, Tom and John Pertwee. I mean, no one's going to... You know, in, especially in these first three years, I'd say Tom was sort of doing a Pertwee a bit, with a bit of trout and thrown in. Obviously, later on, Tom went totally mad and Tom Tom. But now he's he's holding it back, playing chess together. I think the chess pieces are just about to go. Is Fenric going to turn up? Because I have watched Fenric. So, uh, before you say I'm a complete Philistine for not liking the Seventh Doctor. And now we get this massive laser gun. I mean, this turns up again in some other stories. But look at that. I mean, that's brilliant, isn't it? Whoever designed this was really good. And he's stopping to have a nice... Oh, here we go. This is the 51st century. So, yeah, but if he's lying, he must... How would he know the details, dummy? It's like a psychic. You know they're lying because they don't know anything. But Tom actually knows all about this details so there it is and why are they playing this game the infamous minister of justice there you go the butcher of brisbane the butcher of brisbane checkmate see and he's that's really nice i'd like to have that i bet that would go for a bomb if you had that in um doctor who uh, if you could sell that down a convention you get bloody hundred grand for it i reckon <laughs> well not that much 20 grand but why has he got these jars he's still doing his sort of this has got the sort of like Early hammer look about it, isn't it? So you are from the future. Well, obviously he's from the future, you divvy. Can't you tell that grill? You know, he's from the future. Maybe I should just do the last episodes of Who because the first two set-up ones are so boring, aren't they? Do a recap of what's happened and then we can do the commentary on the exciting episode. And now now that Mr. Sin's listening to Tom and he realises Grill's going to destroy the whole place and the world if he does what he says he's going to do, so it's definitely the Sigma experiments were a failure. Nothing came of them. See, this reminds me of the pirate planet, you know. When he's saying, what's it for? You know, when he really gives it the big one. Because it's a failure of the experiment. It doesn't work. What the Queen's trying to do in that episode. Go and watch that if you want to. But this story's a 10 out of 10, isn't it? I rate it now when we're getting towards the end, but it is a 10 out of 10. There's no one surrounded. <laughs> we're on our own. Jago's lost his um, masculinity all of a sudden. I kept my words, give me the key. And then he's got to let him go. And now he's going to ask too much. He's definitely got talcum powder in his hair to make him older, hasn't he? Because like I say, he turned up in that Jekyll and Hyde Michael Caine. There you go, Tom's been blasted. We didn't see the laser hit him, but that would have cost too much. Why does he want him alive? I don't get that. Beware the eye of the dragon. Well, couldn't they see that? Well, they didn't save anything here. Get this stinking heaps of rubbish out of here. Such a lovely chap, isn't he, uh, Magnus? <laughs> Very magnanimous of you, Magnus. <laughs> and now they're getting them all out. Yeah, see, this really picks up in the last... Even the first... Even, like, the first episode's a good setup. 
There is a lot of padding in this. I don't think a modern audience would sit through six episodes of this. I mean, you could probably truncate the first three episodes and stick the last two on, and that'd probably do this, I reckon. What do we think, peeps? You think that would work? Yeah, I reckon it would work. And here goes the peaking homunculus. Yep, now see, now, now he knows the truth. He's put the thing in. And see, this is, I mean, it's still good, isn't it? That works and everything's flashing up. So they've made some kind of bulb circuit inside. Look, it's got, oh, he can go. He's going to leave. Will he leave, though? The parallax synchron for each. See, all these words. I mean, I don't know what Robert Holmes was reading or smoking, but wow. But Mr. Sin knows this isn't going to work. So he's going to lose it now. Everybody's dead, Jim. The two pretty ladies are... Oh, yeah, I still think he needs to re-energise, doesn't it? A double heartbeat, is there? Yeah. <laughs> At least uh, Robert Holmes remembered that. Millions wouldn't. Don't know. Oh, they'll be helping him up. He might start talking about treacle wheels and soon, but I, know, I think that was... There it is. There was one for the Northern Cat Man do, yeah. He always wakes up talking gibberish, doesn't he? It's like he regenerates inside again, isn't it? Harry Champion, 1920. Who the blooming hell's Harry Champion? There, yeah, right, well, I bet you lot don't know. Right underneath, if you do know, remember to like and subscribe. I mean, we'll leave Dr. Lahu alone for a bit now. I think we've commentated for millions of years. See, my two younger daughters would have loved listening to this commentary. See, if you listen in the future, gals, this is what Daddy did with his spare time. He watched some DVD commentaries. I mean, God knows we love then. It'd be in front of your eyes. But you can remember. See, you've got a permanent record of my voice. You'll always know how wonderful I stand, sounded. <laughs> They're escaping with the two girls now. My two girls, those two girls, must have been an inference in my mind. We linked it all together. I'm so clever. Not. A bucket of water and break off that gas pipe. <laughs> and here we go. They're getting stuck in. Time to prepare my two patridges. Oh, here he goes. So now he's telling him to come down, but Mr. Sin knows. Wouldn't let you kill the doctor, is that it? No, he knows Mr. Sin is, even though he's a maniac pig thing, he still knows that the Sigma experiment is wrong. Oh, he's going piggy. I don't know why it took this long to go piggy. Before we leave. Oh, here we go. Leela's still alive, and she's going to finish it. Oh, is that from... Um, the mask kid. It looks like the mask kid in uh, Kinder and all that uh, snake dance. Another dull story. Love you, Pete, but snake dance was a dud as boring as crap. Yeah, dive, bent face. Yeah, this is it. Go on, Leela. You're a warrior. You should know how to kill him. Easy. Better take him up the back. She likes out the back. Better take it up the back. Oh, what? Where do these guys come from? Oh, no, she's going into the machine. Time to revitalise. <laughs> Here we go, hold her still. Oh, no, yeah, use her. It's like a James Bond villain, isn't it? We'll always do this one more thing. We'll put you in the thing. And we'll, to feed my reject... God, he's even talking about regenerations. There you go. And that's the machine from... Uh, I think it's from uh, Pyramids of Mars, isn't it, that thing? It looks like the Marconi Scopey type thing that... What's his name was using? Mr. Bronson from Grange was using. I forget the guy's the name's actor, but there you go, never mind. I promise you this, when we're the great hereafter, I shall hunt you down, bent face. See, she's got brilliant. She's not scared. I love her. She's brilliant, Leela. She really has got style, man. <laughs> Leela has got style. She's the one. It's leaking. I can smell it. That sounds really bad. Sounds like one of them's letting one go, doesn't it? But do you never know, do you? Why's he got a bucket? Those prostitutes would have had a bucket, I'm sure. Who uh, are naughty, naughty? Down, down, things will be great. So, yeah, they don't know what the hell's going on. Unpaid extras, do not pay them. Make the, I'm not allowed to talk. Then the they go, shh. <laughs> Distant shouting in Chinese. Lucifer, see, the, this reminds me of... um. That episode of Sapphire is still watch if you can. It's the best one of that series. Where they're in the train station. And they're talking about Lucifer's. Lucifer's a matches people, if you don't know, if you're all fickos out there. Lucifer is the, uh, what is it, what was called a match in them days. So, 
Yeah, oh, here we go. He's like he's gonna blast his way out by the look of it. So weird. Here we go. He got gunpowder. I didn't really see. Her. I should have been paying more attention, but I was half and half, wasn't I? Naughty me. Anyway, um, they're gonna get out of here somehow. Oh, they're gonna blow the guards up. I think because they're coming in. There we go. Boom. Perfect timing, in fact. As always, when you escape from these places. <laughs> oh no, Leela can't get out and she's being drained of all of her powers. Where was there? Can be no escape for you. Let the talons of Wing Chun shred your flesh. See, I'm still not sure because Mr. Sin's still sitting up there losing his marbles, isn't he? So, that looks like part of the console from the wooden console. I think, has it? What, well, it's warped by now, I think. Or it's go. Oh, there we go. Tom blew the machine up. See, he should have hit Grill with it. Oh, this is Grill's ending, isn't it? I forgot. Kill them, Mr. Sin. Kill them. Oh, Mr. Sin's definitely losing it. It's a Star Wars blast from everywhere. It looks good, doesn't it? This is 77, people. Appreciate the skill of the times. You all should. It's really cool, isn't it? I offer you a proposition you'll let me out. No chance. We're busy. Because I think Grill's running out of time. I'll spare you your lives if you leave now. Yes, I hope with that trigger-happy pig, like he says. There, there's the magnanimous of you, Magnus line. Yeah, they'll be cut down as soon as they walk out here. They know that's true. And of course, the old Peking Monculus has lost his mind. So, uh, as we said, there's no, um, there's no coming back at this point. See, he got his head up and he nearly got the Ark in Space um, apple, didn't he? Blast in time when he stuck his head up with that guard in the Ark in Space. You might, you don't sound too well. There it is. He is in the Porsche date. He's running out of his energy <laughs> cut that bench. Why didn't you do that in the first place? God damn. Oh, great with catapults. And it seems like Bulldog Drummond, and he's got that sort of hooray adventuring going on there, hasn't it? You know. Hmm. It is good. Oh, the bench is going, so I should have done that in the first place, of course. Move. Grab the thing and pull it with you, you divvies. Oh, yeah, they're moving it along. I like the eyeballs. They're very cool. Oh, Tom's off. There's so little to left time left to me. Oh, here come the karate men. Oh, he's going to kill everybody now. Yeah, here we go. He's just gone mental. He's finally lost it. I don't know why he was so calm at the beginning. Because they said he went crazy in the future. But now he's like, hmm. So, yeah, a 10 out of 10 for product design, timing, ratings. I mean, this is a classic story, isn't it? And Robert Holmes run this up in about, you know, a couple of months, a month or so. He had to write whatever. I don't know how long it took him to write this. And he just threw it together so quick. And when you think of Eric Sayward in the 80s throwing these episodes together, and that's so shit. That it can, can touch this stuff. It's amazing. Oh, here we go. Mr. Sin's getting it. Oh, there you go. He's being brave at last. I say, I say, I say. <laughs> Going back from his compare days at the start. Eh? Still shooting, but he's distracting him long enough for Tom to get stuck in. Oh, blow that bedpan off. I think that was an extra piece from um, Steptoe and Son. Me thinks. <laughs> you remember when he had one in Steptoe and Son? It was a big pot. Stem ginger jar. The Seven Step to Rye episode. Oh, here we go. It'll be certain death for everybody. He doesn't care. But I think that Mr. Sin's thinking about it. The Zygma Beal is at full strength. The Zygma Beam, so it's going to blow everybody up. And Mr. Sin is definitely listening. <laughs> oh, there he goes, because Mr. Sin doesn't want to die. You'll be at the centre. Tom has perfectly curly hair, doesn't he? It's fantastic. I don't think we've had anyone with as beautiful curly hair since, have we? Colin Baker's was scrunch and dried, I think. Oh, here we go. There's Mr. Sin. How did he know this? You'd think he'd be busy looking at his time box, wouldn't you? No, it's being shy. There you go. This mutiny. <laughs> How can it be mutiny? Oh, here we go. Oh, Mr. Sin's dead now. No, he's not dead, but he's being shot at. 
Ah, I gotcha. He had his little pearly shooting bit from Death in the Nile movie. Oh, here we go. Oh, I think it's dummy time. It's Tomb of the Cybermen dummy time. Oh, no, I think he actually threw him in there. Yeah, they must have been cushioned, and that is the end of Magnus. Here you go. Is bent face dead? I think he's dead, Leela. He's probably not in a good way, that's for sure. There he goes. It's like when they disappear in supermarkets. That's the same trick they use. <laughs> Brilliant. There's all my years of pathologists. I've never seen it. Pathologists? Would they have had that word in the late 1800s? Ah, oh, I don't know. Maybe. But we are wrapping things up now. Don't forget, Mr. Sin's still there, Tom. Here he comes. Hey, and it's a nosedive. On to Lelly. On to Lally. Oh, Tom's got him. Hey! <laughs> I think Deep Roy was supposed to be really up for all this. And in Blake... Oh, dummy time! It's a dummy. And in Blake 7, he turned into... He got broke his shoulder or something. Because one of the... One tarrant for him to... Uh, I've got to take out the insulin. And now he's dead. He's fused and he's gone. There you go. I would have burnt that, you bugger. Now destroy that. And you're all done, Tom. As we're closing in on the end of this absolutely classic episode. I hope you enjoyed spending this time with me, peeps. Because I've worked hard to get these six episodes out to you all at some point. I know it took a while, but... Like I said, the muffin man's coming. Hot muffins. <laughs> See? And it just sort of bends down. And it really is the greatest... One of the greatest Doctor Who's. It's got to be top five of all time, hasn't it, really? And you can talk about your racism and what have you. It doesn't matter, because this is really a great story. And uh, as we come down, I just hope you... Subscribe to me what you want me to do. Maybe some more Doctor Who. Tell me a story of what story you want next. I'll probably do some comedies next to their half hour or maybe a movie because they're not as long as this. Because this has gone on for a long time. We're back at the TARDIS. We're saying goodbye. And the, and see, Robert, oh, these are great rains, about 11 million throughout average this season, this uh, story, for all the episodes. And now they're going to dematerialise in the TARDIS. So leave a like and a subscribe. Send me your money and your naked girlfriend pictures and all that lark. That's all I want from you. I'm very kind in that respect, as you know. There's a police box, so it's their special police box. Will it disappear on time? No doubt Scotland Yard provided it for him. See, it's lovely language, isn't it? <laughs> and there it goes. It's magic worthy of Ching. <laughs> Behind him, the poster there, because I did this. Oh, policeman, wonderful policeman. One. So I hope you enjoyed my wimbling and wombling over it. Lee saying, yeah, worthy of Ching. You might have appreciated it. Brilliant story, eh? There it is. I'm glad we got through this marathon. I hope you enjoyed my vague ramblings. I will see you again for a commentary in the future on something else. But leave a like and a subscribe. This is the MP signing off.